Now let's work a problem that puts some of these cost concepts together into one problem. It will help us to see why we have different cost classifications for different reasons when we're making management decisions or preparing financial statements. Below is information related to 4A Ropes, a manufacturer of ropes used in rodeo sports. The company produces two product lines in a single factory, nylon ropes in the nylon division and nylon poly ropes in the blended division. Salesmen are paid a base salary for representing both product lines and are paid a 5% commission on sales. Assume 4A Ropes produced 10,000 units and sold 8,000 units during the period. Now we see a list of costs here, the nylon requisitioned by the nylon division, that of course means nylon used in the nylon division, factory supplies, wages paid to assemblers in the nylon division, salary paid to production supervisor in the nylon division, sales salaries, sales commissions in the nylon division, salaries and wages paid to administrative staff, depreciation on factory equipment in the nylon division, depreciation on sales and administrative office building, and then insurance, 80% of which is for factory operations and 20% for selling and administrative facilities. Now with that, the first thing we are asked to do is classify each of the costs as direct or indirect to two different cost objects. First, the nylon division, and second, each unit. Now we might want to do this so that we know what are the costs incurred by the nylon division. Is the nylon division profitable? And then each unit, because we would want to be able to know what the cost of producing a unit is to help us set the sales price and make other decisions. Then determine if each of the costs would generally be a variable cost, a fixed cost, or a mixed cost. We'll use the chart, and again, when we're classifying as direct or indirect, remember we're doing this for two different cost objects, the division itself, where they produce nylon ropes, and then each unit. Then we'll decide if the cost would generally be considered variable cost, fixed cost, or mixed cost. Now we'll say up front, there is some gray area here, and I'll try to make the information clear so that you can identify if it's direct or indirect to a division or variable fixed or mixed. All right, nylon requisitioned by the nylon division. That is just represents the nylon used in that division, so that would be directly traceable to that division. And that being a direct material, we would consider it generally traceable to each unit. It would also vary directly with production. The more you produce, the more nylon you will use, so it is a variable cost. Factory supplies requisitioned by the division. We would be able to trace that to, eat to the nylon division because of the requisition form that would be filled out. However, this is an overhead cost and it would not be traced directly to each unit. It would generally vary with production, so we'll call that a variable cost. Wages paid to assemblers in the nylon division. Since they work in the nylon division, it would be direct to that division. And generally speaking, that would be a direct labor cost. And we will assume that can be traced to each unit. So it's direct to each unit. Wages are considered a variable cost since they vary with the number of hours worked. Nylon Division Production Supervisor Salary. This supervisor works for the Nylon Division, so it is direct to the division. However, it is considered to be an overhead cost in that division, and so it will be indirect to each unit. Salaries are generally fixed costs. The sales salary is paid to represent both the nylon and the blended division. 
Therefore, those salaries would be indirect to the nylon division and indirect to each unit. You could allocate it, but it would still be an indirect cost. Salaries, unlike wages, are considered to be a fixed cost. Sales commissions in the nylon division, you could trace that directly to the division and you could trace it to the inventory that was sold. Sales commissions are generally variable costs. Salaries and wages paid to administrative staff at corporate headquarters. This staff will work to benefit both divisions, so it will be indirect to the nylon division and indirect to each unit. And because it's comprised of both salaries and wages, we would say it is a mixed cost. Depreciation on factory equipment in the nylon division. This specifies that this equipment is used in the nylon division, so it's directly traceable to that division. However, it is an overhead cost and it is indirect to each unit produced. Depreciation, because it is fixed for a given time period, usually a year, we will consider that to be a fixed cost. Now we know if you use double declining balance or the modified cost recovery system, it will change from year to year, but over the short run period of a year, depreciation is a fixed cost. Depreciation on sales in administrative offices, this would be indirect to the nylon division. It would be indirect to each unit. And it would be considered a fixed cost. Insurance on the factory, because there are two departments in that factory, it would be indirect to the nylon division. It would be indirect to each unit. And insurance would be considered a fixed cost for the time period. Now let's look at the other way we classify costs, that's product versus period costs. We're going to classify each of those costs as direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, or a period cost. And we are supposed to include a total, so I'm going to put the amount incurred in each of the columns. The nylon requisitioned by the nylon division was given to be a $15,000 and that is a direct material. Factory supplies requisitioned by the nylon division. This would be a manufacturing overhead cost and the amount was $1,000. Wages paid to assemblers in the nylon division. This is a product cost and it is classified as direct labor. The nylon division uh, production supervisor salary this person does work in the factory, so it is a product cost, but he or she does not work hand on, hands on the product, so it would be considered an overhead cost. Sales salaries is a period cost. It relates to selling and administration. Sales commissions are a period cost. Salaries and wages for the administrative staff are a period cost. Depreciation on the factory does relate to production, but it is an overhead cost. Depreciation on selling in administrative offices is a period cost. The insurance, because it is partially for the factory and partially for selling in administrative facilities, we will have to break that up. 800 will be considered manufacturing overhead. $200 will be considered a period cost. Now they could determine this based on square feet or value. Somehow they have decided how they want to break this cost up. Now we can provide our total, our direct material totals to be $15,000. Our direct labor is $50,000. Our manufacturing overhead is $44,800, and 
and our total period costs are $44,200. If we wanted to provide a total for the production costs, we would add up direct material plus direct labor plus manufacturing overhead, and it totals out to be $109,800. Now we're going to look at a couple of things that are other definitions that you'll want to know, things like prime cost and conversion cost. And so remember, prime cost is direct material plus direct labor. So from the previous calculation, we know that direct material cost was $15,000, direct labor cost was $50,000, so it totals $65,000. We are asked to compute a prime cost per unit, so we would take the $65,000 of prime cost, and remember, we are going to produce 10,000 units and sell 8,000 units. If you said divide by the 10,000, you were right. Production cost should be divided by production. We get a cost per unit of $6.50. Next, we'll calculate the total conversion costs. Remember, this is the cost of converting materials, and as such, the formula is direct labor plus overhead. Our direct labor cost was calculated to be $50,000. Our manufacturing overhead cost was calculated to be $44,800. So total prime costs are $94,800. I'm sorry, total conversion cost is $94,800. Last, we'll look at how these costs are treated. It says determine the total cost of goods sold and operating expenses that will be expensed on the income statement. So cost of goods sold represents some part of the product cost and operating expenses represent the period costs. So I'll remind you that the total product costs were $109,800 and the total period costs were $44,200. You'll also want to remember from the information provided that the company will produce 10,000 units and sell 8,000 units during the period. So for cost of goods sold, you're going to take your product cost, direct material plus direct labor plus overhead of $109,800 and you are going to divide by 10,000 units produced. You will calculate the cost to be $10.98 per unit. To get your cost of goods sold, you'll need to multiply by the number sold, 8,000 units. Cost of goods sold then is $87,840. The operating expenses are easy. The notes tell you these are expensed in full in the period incurred. So we'll expense the full $44,200. So again, you can see why it is necessary to classify as product or period cost to prepare financial statements. Your product costs, while you incurred $109,800 during the period, you only expensed $87,840. The rest of the cost would be in the value of inventory on your balance sheet. And then the period costs are fully expensed. All right, now we've covered the different ways to classify costs and the different reasons we would do that. And the best thing you can do now is get some practice.